Hi, Steve Hayes here. Welcome to Days Are Getting Better, episode number 27. It's right after the new year. It's time to look back at the last year and look forward to the next. And maybe talk about things that have come to fruition and are now seen clearly or have had exciting continuations. Things that have ended and things that have just started and maybe a little glimpse ahead to what the next year uh, might hold for us. Uh, and when I say us, I mean those who are interested in contextual behavioral science, act, process-based therapy, RFT, and all the rest of that. But from the point of view of my list, most of you are professionals, uh, about a quarter of you are not, and I'll try to speak to both sides of that. When you stop at the end of the year and you look back, you often note things that have ended. And there were some things that ended for me. I retired from the academy, the University of Nevada Arena, where I'd been for blah, 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 ever since 1986. Do the math. I think that's 37 years. Uh, but in the academy more generally, 10 years uh, beyond that. Um, so a long time. And that shift, I'm not 100% through it. I still have two students to get their PhDs with me, and I hope they'll finish that in the next few months. It really has been a time where I can kind of look around and say, hey, what is of most importance now that I don't have an employer telling me what it is that I need to do? Uh, there was an anniversary of an ending, uh, uh, that happened as well. My brother died uh, just around Thanksgiving time a year ago, and we had a celebration, a six-month anniversary, and it was a beautiful one. And it was just so wonderful to see what my bro had been able to produce as far as uh, a large group of loving people who came and collect from all around the country to celebrate his life. And that's a point to think about, well, what do you want your life to be about? And I I think all of us, the end of the year is a good time to think about that. And coming out of that, uh, for one thing, I definitely want to be as loving and caring towards others as my brother was. And he'll always be with me. But that was an ending that I feel every day. It's not widely announced, but I do need to share with you. I've stopped my relationship with Praxis, a wing of New Harbinger that has never an owner or whatever, but it did go together with New Harbinger to help create it. And uh, Jackie and I put 10 good years into ACT Boot Camp and the uh, development of uh, online courses and, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, that uh, came to an end for reasons I might describe uh, going forward. But, you know, I still love the people there. I wish them well. Uh, but uh, uh, that has uh, come to an end. Um, there were also events this year that were milestones. Um, this was the year that we in the ACT CBS RFT community saw some really clear indications of how ACT and CBS work has moved into the mainstream. And what I'm really proud of is the Journal of Contextual Behavioral Science, which we started some years ago as part of the Association for Contextual Behavioral Science. Uh, Joe Sorochi was the first editor, was on the committee that helped pick him, and we've now been through a number of editors, and the current editor, Mike Levin, of course, a student of mine, doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And here to find that JCBS is now the most widely distributed, behaviorally oriented journal in the world. And, ta da, with the highest impact factor in the world as well, exceeding even such important and long-lasting and prestigious journals as behavior therapy or behavior research and therapy, and we're breathing down the neck of JCCP. So let's see how far it can go. 
and I fully expect it to continue as Mike steps down and the new editor takes over, uh, who I happen to know. Just a secret. It'll be announced any minute. Isabel Ginger Sadra at Australian Catholic University, a wonderful, wonderful person, brilliant, hardworking. I just am really excited to see where that may uh, go, looking forward. Uh, research on an act uh, continued to expand and some really important kind of indications that we've matured came in. Uh, just to pick a few, um, the World Health Organization, Mark Van Omer, announced that the single most downloaded document in the entire WHO website is an act self-help book, Doing What Matters in Times of Stress. Uh, Russ Harris, essentially involved in producing that, very, very proud to see that happening and to see that after really good, careful, gold-plated, gold standard, sometimes gold-plated because it's expensive to do it this way, studies on it have now um, been given the full weight of encouragement from WHO, and it's right now in the Ukraine and in uh, Israel and uh, Palestine, and it is... Uh, Really, really gratifying to see that level of maturation of the work that we've done. Kind of as a numerical indication of that. ACT, randomized controlled trials passed 1,000. If you look at the website now, you'll see there's a 1,070, but I happen to know that there's at least 60 to 100 that are about to be uploaded. So we'll be deep into the 1,100s and chasing down 1,200. Uh, almost by the time that you see this episode, or just a week or two later, if they all get posted, and it's quite a bit of work, and I've done some of that work, and have for many years, um, uh, to, to post these things, and to find them. Um, and one of the things I'm really, really proud of there, just in beyond the productivity, is how many of those studies are in lower and middle income countries. And so, almost half is the answer which um, gives you an indication that the work that we've been doing together is um, one that people feel is uplifting and empowering to their particular journeys, regardless of the particular culture, faith tradition, a community that they're part of. And I think it's because we've drilled down to some of the most basic processes that are involved in human prosperity. And uh, so that's been a very exciting to see that happen. Another sort of sense of, boy, we've arrived, is that a very, very clear indications of process-based therapy is becoming a, a kind of a central focus. I don't think people realize how much it's gonna change things, and I'll mention that when we get into the beginning section, but uh, boy, you can hardly find uh, people who are writing about what's happening in uh, psychological interventions of all kinds who are not going to talk about a process focus, who aren't going to talk about the limitations of the DSM or the ICD, who aren't going to talk about uh, how much we uh, need to create new ways of creating progress, uh, given the obvious uh, sense that syndromal classification has not been that progressive for us. Uh, as a wing of science that's here, after all, to help human betterment. When I look at what just has begun in 2023 and I look forward, boy, I take a breath in and say, Ooh, there's a lot of cool things that have begun here. Uh, speaking just a little bit self-focused, you know, just the things that you see in the newsletter and then and so forth. Some clear new beginnings there. Our YouTube channel is becoming real, uh, for example. We're figuring out a way to enter into the conversations uh, through days are getting better, but not just that, uh, through our social media and so on. Uh, I have a really, really clear sense that my work with the Institute for Better Health, which is a coming up on soon to be 50 year old charitable organization uh, is 
now really providing a solid foundation for things that will be built in the future. And I've worked on this for a couple, three years, but this is the year where it felt like, yes, this is going to happen. Uh, Spencer Smith, who used to be uh, the director of Praxis, is now uh, the uh, executive director of IBH. And we just released our first app called MindGrapher on Cyber Monday. And so at the end of 2023, that vision became real, been working on it for years. And it plugged into something I've also been working on for years, which is an app that is very useful to practitioners. And that combination uh, can set up a, uh, a, a, a system in which, for the first time, what we've been talking about for all these years on process-based therapy becomes concrete and real in a way that alters day-to-day -day clinical practice, day-to-day -day, uh, empirical work in all of the intervention sciences, whether you're even a teacher or a, 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 an OT or a PT or a nurse or a behavior analyst or a counselor or psychiatrist, psychologist, uh, social worker, and on and on it goes. Um, uh, so towards the end of the summer, PsychFlex was released, uh, and that already has established itself. I mean, the number of uh, practitioners who have subscribed are now measured in four figures. Uh, the number of clients uh, who have this in their pocket are now deep into four figures, and soon, I think, uh, in a year of coming, I'll get there to us in a second to reach five figures. And uh, that's just a cool, boom, kind of public facing indication of how things progress and perfectly timed with my retirement and has really uh, given a, a, a focus uh, for the last half of 2023 for me as an individual and I think increasingly for a wing of the community that understands and knows that if we move in a process-based direction, we have to move in a more individually tailored direction and one size fits all is simply not ever going to produce either an understanding of the needs, the psychological uh, supports that are needed by people or of the methods needed to produce it. Uh, a kind of over on the beginning side, a more intellectual one is the oh my God moment when uh, a soon to be released, I hope, in general consulting and clinical psychology. No, no, that's not where it is. In the Journal of Contextual Behavioral Science, a soon-to-be-released uh, article proves that the methods that we have used to model the individual over the last 10 to 15 years that have become very much the uh, confident focus of statisticians that we no longer have to worry about the fact that the average doesn't reflect the individual. It turns out is massively distorting the pathways of individuals and allowing or encouraging the scientists to deceive themselves and then accidentally, because of that, to deceive others. So that's um, an oh my God moment that happened, but it's the one that blends over into the next thing because the oh my God moment was when I was kind of looked and said, ah, these things we've been saying about psychometrics, these things we've been saying about processes of change, the things we've been saying about how we need to do our studies differently are so true that uh, you kind of have to take a breath in and say, wow, that's not going to be a happy message. We're going to have a lot of people upset with us. Uh, and pretty soon. But I think in the long run, it's going to be very, very progressive. And here's a place where I can shift over to an excited uh, look forward to 2024. Let me just say a few things that come to mind. I didn't make notes on this part because I just wanted to be spontaneous on it. But um, I can say that ACT Boot Camp and all of its varieties at Goop Camp for Behavior Analysts and for Chronic Pain and for Women's Issues and so forth has been brought back home. 
that was begun by my wife Jackie and I. It was actually her vision for it and a brilliant one. And it's prospered and been built in praxis, but uh, the end of that is now uh, coming. There'll be a last one in Seattle, and after that, I, I believe uh, it will be uh, linked to the Institute for Better Health. That hasn't been publicly announced yet, but I think that's the intention. We'll be moving ahead very vis vigorously. And so if you've been wondering uh, where ACT Boot Camp is and uh, even how you can uh, get it to show up in your corner of the words, woods and so forth, um, I'm here to say it's alive, it's well. I'm working on it really, really hard. Probably in the next year, it'll just be a, a couple of additional things, but in exciting new forms that we'll talk about when it lands. And we're on it, we're working on it, and it is gonna be even bigger, I believe. More important, more central, more vital, and maybe more relevant in the ability to reach people uh, around the world. Uh, with uh, a form of act, with a, a vision of act that is fully harmonized with a process-based vision that's being expressed in PBT. You know, I've said it here before, if you've been following, you know, you know, PBT does not replace act. It's not here going to kill act. That's just not going to happen. It gives you a meta model so what we've been doing in act can grow into the very large shoes that it always had. And for other people to be invited in to that common journey without having to check their ideas at the door or feel that they're going to have to become act people in order to be able to play this process focused game in a way that reflects what we've been doing with new steps forward in the 40 year of develop years of development of act and cbs rft and so on uh, another kind of exciting thing <laughs> Uh, looking forward is, I have to say, is the app. Uh, PsychFlex is growing at light speed. It's now 100% bigger than it was when we started just four months ago. Uh, MindGrapher was turned on and made live at, on Cyber Monday, and it is already in its third minor edition. We have to do it with decimal points and about uh, to launch a, a, a notable a bigger revision and month by month by month it's just getting better and better it's going to better and better and that's true of psychflex as well i've almost begged for people to you know give it a try you have nothing to lose 30 days you can you know get your money back but i especially beg for people to give me a year give me a year subscription use it use it with your clients and you will find that a, it's already incredibly useful. B, as you watch its development, you can see in a very concrete way how PBT is going to change. How all of the intervention sciences think of themselves when you combine it with these idiomic statistical methods that are already functioning in the, the back end labs of uh, the research and development arm of Institute for Better Health especially with the wonderful work of the Research and Development uh, Committee headed up uh, by Joe uh, Sorochi at Australian Catholic University that I predict 2024 will be the year that idiomic analysis arrives in a form that is so clear that people will have their own oh my god moment that I've already had because I've been looking at the articles that we've, we're sending out that are under review, where you say, oh, well, that's different. And it's different in such a fundamental way that I think when people appreciate it, it's going to shake the foundations a little bit. I'm sorry for saying it in a way that looks like self-praise. Uh, and one reason you know it's not just self-praise is that when we've taken these methods and then looked at the processes that are I'm best known for. Boy, here's the conclusion uh, that is strongly shows up, is that you need to model the individual because it always depends. It depends. And I think we're going to be able, in that combination of PsychFlex and MindGrapher, 
begin to build that large uh, database that will allow us to ironically do what we need to do if we really care about the individuals and the trajectories over time that predict improvement of individuals, which is to have hundreds and even thousands of good examples of that so that we can go from a purely ideographic approach to a more nomothetic approach and come up with principles uh, that describe more generally how change happens. So looking ahead, it's going to be all hands on deck in, here in the Hayes household. Um, and I think uh, in, in, the, in the organizations that I touch and I'm involved with, but I think also for those of you who follow my work and are here and uh, getting this uh, message from me, that you should know that, you know, uh, everything is finite. This too shall pass. And our job, I was very much reminded of with that memorial with my brother or with seeing things that I've worked with my close colleagues for 10 or 20 years come to an end, but then find new ways to move forward. That our job is always to find a way to create the kind of progress that will improve the lives of others who will never know that we were involved in creating progress in that way, but will benefit from it nevertheless. And so that's uh, my hope for you in 2024 and my intention for me in 2024 as I uh, move ahead uh, in this new path. And I didn't even talk about my fractured elbow. It's in the blog. And uh, what it reminded me of in terms of my physical health, that same theme of finitude and the look forward and let's just work together as a community in a loving way to improve the lives of those we serve to improve the world and leave it a little better place than it was heretofore peace love and life my friends and have a great 2024